Hi, welcome to this session of understanding zero cross detection. Zero cross detection meaning that if our supply frequency is 50 hertz, that is 50 cycles per second, so we know that T is equal to 1 by F, that is 1 by 50 is equal to 0 to, uh, zero 0.02 is equal to 20 millisecond. That means one cycle is 20 millisecond and the half cycle is 10 millisecond. We'll see in a typical simulation software how to achieve zero voltage switching. That means that every 10 millisecond, how do we get zero voltage pulses? This is, this is a typical circuit which comprises of many other things, but many things you might be familiar with. Like for example, this is a transformer, step down transformer, 10 is to 1 and this is a bridge rectifier, all of you know and this is a voltage regulator IC. This voltage regulator IC has been discussed separately in some of the audios but to brief you a little, all that we know that if this is unregulated DC voltage, that means if this, is, this vol, uh, DC voltage varies because of the input voltage varying, so the rectified voltage will vary. So this filtered DC voltage will vary and but this side remains constant depending on what kind of regulator IC you are using. If you are using a regulator IC of 78L12 that means irrespective of the voltage variation here from 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 20 till 25 or even 7812 can accept till 35 volts here even the voltage varies from say minimum 14 that means minimum 2 volt is higher than this. So 14 to 35, this side remains 12 volt. That's the beauty of these kind of linear regulators. The, the balance voltage is dropped across this and it's a power loss. So the efficiency is very poor, but it maintains a voltage. It's a very low cost device. That is why people use this. We will not discuss about this diode, which is another function, but then we will discuss about this importance of this particular diode. See, we know if there is a bridge rectifier like this, I get pulsating DC here. And that pulsating DC is filtered by this capacitor. Now, if I do not provide this diode here, this DC will be filtered. So, you will get only DC here. But my circuit requires, because of certain requirement, pulsating DC also. So, now let's see how we utilize that pulsating DC and to get the zero voltage cross, zero voltage pulse. Alright. Now, we will go over to, uh, let's see, what is the voltage here? We get the voltage here, pure sine wave. We get the sine wave voltage here, because we know that the transformer gives us sine. And we had seen that there was a step down and it is connected to a bridge rectifier. So we get here pulsating DC, right? So what we get here? We get here pulsating DC. This is what is my pulsating DC. Right. Let me give it a little more wider. Right. So I get pulsating DC. And what I have done is I have taken a potential divider. That means two resistors connected between positive and negative. This is the negative line of the bridge rectifier. This is the positive line. Well, we are talking about this diode. This diode is a blocking diode. We call it a blocking diode because this side will be DC. This side will be pulsating DC. You can see now if I take my cursor here, I get pure DC here. Don't ignore this uh, Ignore this uh, initial portion. This portion is the DC. So this is what is the DC. I get roughly about 12 volt DC. Duly filtered. But prior to that, what I get? I get pulsating DC. That is the reason why I put a diode here. If I had not put this diode, I would have only getting the DC here. I need this pulsating DC for some purpose. That is why I had deliberately put this diode here. This is the design trick. Okay. Now I go over to this potential potential divider. And what you see here, what is the voltage? The voltage is here somewhere around 12 to 13 volt pulsating DC. At every 10 millisecond, this is 10, 20, 30. So at 10, every 10 millisecond, we have this pulsating DC. So now, so this pulsating DC 
we have to convert this pulsating DC to zero voltage pulses. We will see how we do it. We take this pulsating DC and because of the potential divider, I will get certain less voltage here. This voltage is somewhere about 13 volts and with this potential divider arrangement, I get here around 3 volts. Let us see it. We get around 3 something peak here back to 0. This is the 0 line and uh, I get pulsating DC like this. That is very clear. We know what is pulsating DC. Now we take an operational amplifier and we use it in a comparator mode. What is comparator? That means this is my non-inverting input. This is my inverting input. Comparator always only one formula that when the non-inverting input is more than the inverting input, that means the voltage. The voltage at the non-inverting input is more than the inverting input. The output is 1. 1 means supply voltage. If this supply voltage is 12 volt, output will be 12 volt. Now, let us for easy understanding or easy remembering, let us call it plus minus. Instead of calling it non-inverting and inverting big words, let us call it plus and minus. And what we see here, we are given pulsating DC to the minus and to the plus, we are given a diode which is forward biased, a silicon diode. This is a silicon diode and forward biasing a silicon diode, we know that this voltage will be roughly close to 0 0.6 volts. Let us see that. What is the voltage here? Now, this voltage is this voltage, this yellow line. Green is that pulsating DC. This is the fixed DC which is 0 0.6 volts because we know the voltage drop across a forward diode is 0.6 volts. With this kind of waveform given at its input of a comparator, what output we will expect? Let us analyze this. This is given, this green, this green one is given to the negative terminal. And this yellow is given to the positive terminal. Now in the voltage wise, whether the positive terminal is bigger or negative terminal is bigger, we have to see. You know, with respect to time. Now, this is my time scale, millisecond, my time scale. From here to here, that means from here to here, green is bigger than yellow. That means green is what? Green is negative. Yellow is what? Positive. That means negative is bigger than positive. If negative is bigger than positive in terms of voltage, the output will be low. That means zero. And from here to here, the positive is bigger than the negative. This green line is negative, yellow line is positive. So, positive is bigger than negative. What will be the output? Will be high. Let us see. But is that formula or not? Correct. Ignore this initial section. Look into this section only. What is this? Green, we said, is connected to the negative, to the negative. And this yellow is connected to the positive. Now, let us zoom in a little more, we'll satisfy the formula. That means from here to here, negative, this is negative and this is positive. Negative is bigger than positive. So, output is 0, this, this, this is 0. This is the 0 line. This is my 0 line. So, this is 0. And from here to here, who is bigger? It is Positive is bigger than negative, but this is negative, but this is positive. So, positive is bigger than negative, the output is high. And since it happens very close to zero, we call it zero cross detection. That means zero voltage detection. And this is what is used for many applications, whether it is in the analog circuits for understanding the zero cross. There are several other concepts of which zero cross, which is this is one of the most reliable means of getting very precise zero cross detection. And that is what is being used for many such applications. So, precisely we get the output eh, zero cross detection, which can be taken for any purpose. This particular circuit is using it for some other purpose and that we will discuss later on. So, this is what is the zero cross detection. Thank you.